Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Um, what is it, the phrase, the uh, morning after the night before, as they say, uh, Bivol versus Baturbiev. Um Fantastic, elite level fight. I think we can agree on that, or most of us will. Um, two very contrasting styles, but both guys absolutely stunning uh, in their in the quality of how they execute their respective skills. Uh, the box fighter Bivol and the high octane pressure fighter in Baturbiev. And it was, in my opinion, a close fight. As I said in my um, review video, I had uh, Baturbiev, uh, no, excuse me, Bivol winning 115-113, um, which is in no way disparaging against Baturbiev. I thought he was magnificent too in what he did. I just happened to... On the, you know, as as I watched it live, I scored it for Bivol, and I'm not going to rewrite history. And I do my review um, videos literally ten minutes after the fight's finished because I don't want to sort of think about things and second guess myself. I want it to be a sort of raw uh, reaction, if you like, to what I've just seen. However, a lot of people in the comments section, lots of you left comments. Thank you for that. He left comments for all the videos I did, and I always appreciate that. But a lot of people were saying, yeah, I thought, you know, it was a close fight. I thought Bivol edged it. I thought Baturbiev edged it. I thought this. Um, Eddie Hearn immediately spitting nails because he, not, well, he, he believes Bivol won the fight, but he was especially irate at the 116, 112 card for Baturbiev. I do understand that. I think that was a. That was too wide. Eight four in rounds to Baturbiev. To me, that's too wide. But <clears throat> I thought what I'll do is I will go and um, I'll take a look at the fight again. Not with. I mean, I'll, I'll, I looked at it again with the sound off. That's the important thing. I, the, the commentary was on when I watched it live, so I put the sound off. I didn't go back to rescore it. I went back to really study it and look for the rounds that could have gone either way if you like. And to me, there were at least three rounds, at least three rounds that I thought that could have gone either way for either man. And for that reason, I think, I mean, that apart from the fact that that illustrates how, what a high quality and competitive fight this was, um, it does allow for obviously either man being declared the winner. By the way, this was not a robbery. Can we stop using this this overused and abused word robbery, okay? The first Cattrell Taylor fight was a robbery. All right? That's a perfect example I can think of. Um there are others, but I'm not gonna go into I just I just you know, please, this was a competitive, very, very close fight. Now some people have pointed out about the, the punch stats. They've said, well, <clears throat> Bivol out punched Baturbiev and punch stats, you know, even though they're not the be all and end all, they don't the, the, the disparity in the punch stats is so strong that they're probably telling an accurate story. Well, let's have a, let's have a think about that point. Punch stats, I wouldn't dismiss them. They do have some sort of meaning, but they are not, again, the be-all and end-all because they don't measure weight of punch. I know they have what are called power punches and so on, it's also a case of how much does a punch affect the other guy, you know. So they can be three – so, you know, one guy can be using sort of three or four – little flurries of three or four jabs, bang, bang, bang. They're not necessarily high, high, high weight jabs. They're not power jabs. But nevertheless, they are keeping the guy un, unbalanced, making him reset and so on. So they're, in other words, they're being effective, but they're not necessarily hurting him. On the other hand, one big – you know, nevertheless, they, they they are worthy punches because they're making the guy reset, if you know what I mean. They're effective, but they're not heavy punches. And of course, if you land, say, let's say, a big left hook to the, to the liver, that, that can, you know, suck the wind out of you um, and hurts like hell. If you've ever been hit there, you know what I mean. That, obviously, that one punch may negate uh, some, you know, lots of good work that, that, that the opponent has done for a previous minute, say. So we have to consider the weight of the punch. We have to consider the effect on the opponent. And yes, I think Baturbiev, although he didn't fire nearly enough body, body punches, I think that's one thing he'll regret. 
he was the guy, especially towards the end of the fight, who was putting it on Bivol and looked to be... It looked as if that smothering, stifling pressure that he puts on was definitely having a um, the desired effect on Bivol. Now, to his credit, Bivol... I don't think he did. He did he lose his shape at any point in the fight? I mean, he was always holding his shape, thinking about winning, thinking, looking for the opportunities, fainting, trying to keep this, you know, immovable force off him. And for the most part, he did very well. He didn't run. That if you if you say that Bivol was running, you really don't understand boxing. I think this is the problem. A lot of people will look at that fight and they'll miss things. That First of all, some people won't know what the hell they're looking at. Those are what you might call the, the casuals. And I, I, don't, I don't mind casuals because they, you know, they, if they're interested in boxing, that's fine. And we, we all start off as casuals. We all start off as people who don't really know what we're looking at and we have to learn it. You know? But a lot of people won't know what they're looking at. Some people, because with, a, with a fight like that, you'll miss things. Even if you've been watching boxing for as long as I have, you know, which is, I don't know, 45 years, maybe more, you'll, you'll miss things because it's such high quality. And you'll think, you'll go back and watch it again like I was doing today and think, oh, yeah, I, I didn't see that. Oh, that was interesting. And, and no doubt if you were to score it again, which I, I refuse to do, but because to me that was my card and I'm sticking with it. Even if, even if I think it's wrong, I'm sticking with it because that's the card I gave in. I'm not rewriting history. Even if you do that, you know, you – you will notice things that you've missed. You will think, okay, I can see the other side of the argument. And yes, I, I think, you know, in the case of Eddie Hearn, who's obviously Bivol's promoter and is going to scream blue murder anyway, the 116-112 was too wide for me personally and I think for most people watching it. There again. Um, what about a draw? <clears throat> I actually said to a couple of people I was sending messages to um, post-fight, I said, I hope this is a draw because I don't really want to see a loser. Um, had it been a split, would there be this, you know, not controversy, that's too strong a word, but this debate going on? Probably not because it was a majority, which is more or less the same thing. Um, there is a simple solution to this, and that is to have a rematch. And Turkey al Sheikh, who was... Um, interviewed afterwards uh, he said he did not agree with the decision and he thought that a a uh, rematch is a probable I think did he mention February I think he did because he was talking about the the next few Riyadh season there's a Latino card coming up um, and then obviously we've got the rematch between New second Fury and then after that he's talking about February, possible uh, the five versus five, another five versus five between Eddie and Frank, and then maybe a rematch. Uh, because don't forget, the five versus five was originally the undercard for Bivol Baturbiev, and then Baturbiev got injured. So I wonder if they he might put if Turkey might say, well, let's have a rematch Baturbiev Bivol, and then the five versus five undercard in February of twenty twenty five. Wouldn't that be some card? Wow. Wow. You know what I mean? That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Um, but he was saying he thought Bivol won it. Um, and he'd, he'd like to see a rematch. And Turkey, once he starts chucking his money around, God bless him. I mean, the, the old little fella, he, uh, I've really warned him. I think he's quite a, a sweet little fella, isn't he? He probably isn't in real life. He's probably an absolute killer. Um, but, you know, I, I just think he's quite an amusing character, um, you know, to, to, to be observed from the outside. But if he puts this on, if he wants this rematch, that's probably what's going to happen. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm sure you are too. Um, if you've got any other thoughts, things that didn't occur to you when you immediately watch the fight and in the immediate aftermath, always best to sort of sleep on it and have a think, isn't it? Uh, but le leave them below. Leave your thoughts below and I'd like to read them. I really enjoyed reading your comments this morning when I got up. Uh, as you can tell, I haven't even got dressed yet. But when I got up and had a read of the comments, I thought, uh, this this fight has caught the imagination. I'm glad about that. I'm glad about that because this is the type of high-quality fight that I think does boxing proud. And both guys be behaving with a lot of dignity as well. You know, you contrast this with that, that Eubank Jr. Ben gimmick, which is all it is. Ben with his pathetic little 
fake Essex accent. And Eubank doing his damnedest to appear superior to literally everyone. Uh, no, that ain't for me. And Ben Whitaker, all flash and dash. And you, you will have seen what happened yesterday. But when, then when you get the, the top of the tree, the absolute headline act, the guys who really are terrific, great fighters, Bivol and Baturbiev, you get them and they behave with a lot of dignity and a lot of class, like a couple of gentlemen, like people should behave if they're adults. I respect that enormously. I really do. So anyway, leave your comments below. Leave them below. I'll have a read of them. And um, thank you for watching this video. If you could subscribe to the channel, if you're a new subscriber, that'd be brilliant. You'd be helping us out a lot. And, uh, you know, that like button, give it a little poke as well. It doesn't cost you nothing. And it helps us out a great deal. Okay, ladies and gents, thanks a lot. I'll catch you later. And bye for now.